All right, let's get started. Um, thanks for joining this morning um, for this uh, session on uh, OpenStack Tacker. Uh, my name is uh, Sridhar Ramaswamy. Uh, I'm a principal engineer in Brocade. I'm the, also the PTL for this OpenStack project. Uh, with me uh, are, are the rest of the core team members over there, uh, Bob Arlton from Nokia, uh, Sri Priya from uh, Brocade, and uh, Stephen from uh, Viyama. So uh, let's get started. Uh, let's see if I can get this work. Oh, this is the engineer. We're going to uh, look at a brief overview of uh, what the scope and the or, uh, uh, scope of OpenStack Tacker project, uh, go into its architecture and some of the features. Uh, we'll spend a lot more time on the demo. Uh, so we had a significant release uh, in Mitaka, so we want to make sure to share with the community uh, of all the nice features that we have uh, introduced in the last cycle. Uh, so we'll spend maximum time there. And we also look at what's coming ahead. Uh, this is a wide, the scope is wide for this, for this subject, so we're going to look at uh, all the stuff that's in our radar uh, and wrap it up with a Q&A. So this is uh, the scope of TACR is around NFE orchestration and VNF management. So we started as a VNF management, VNF manager project, uh, which is based on standards-based architectures, and you probably recognize that's an ITSI uh, diagram there. So overall, the the, the two boxes that out there kind of represents the, the problem space that OpenStack Tacker is after. Uh, even though its core competency is around VNF Manager, but we got to look that box as a whole to provide the solutions that's required uh, for that function. So uh, it's, it's both a, a, a generic VNF Manager and some features go into the area of uh, NFEO. So, and it's an official OpenStack project. We will talk about more on that. So, continuing on the, the, the OREO on the TACA project itself, for the folks who might have followed this project for a while, it started out as a, a Neutron Service VM project. Friendly scratching app. Hang in there. Uh, so, uh, it's. I think it's finally caught up. Yank this out. Let's do the old school way. So uh, it started out as a um, uh, service VM project. We moved into the scope of NFA orchestration early uh, 2015, um, and we announced this project in the uh, Vancouver summit. Uh, we had a session. We demonstrated what we had, which is sort of basis for our first release or uh, with. Uh, with, the, with the functions around basic lifecycle management. So we add a significant amount of interest. We, kinda, we want to feel whether a feel from the community is, is it the right thing, is it the relevant thing, because we believed uh, there was a gap in OpenStack at the time uh, where there are significant am amount of effort that went into OpenStack NOVA project or OpenStack Neutron project around NFE, uh, but, but there is nothing there to actually f to consume those features, or it's very difficult to consume those features. And we believe the, the, the blueprint from Etsy and FE kind of uh, gives a framework to go do something, and that's, that's how we started this project. Uh, so we had a, a good second release, uh, uh, which is Liberty, and again, we demonstrated in, uh, in Turkey. Uh, so there, there is also other things that we did as a project Liberty is significant in one way is that we came together as a community, right? We had uh, core members kind of fell in place that we kind of banded together. Uh, we also decided to make the project uh, real in the sense uh, with proper uh, functional gate tests, unit tests, with proper governance, all geared towards the next thing uh, you see there, which is uh, applying for the Big Ten. So we applied for the Big Ten uh, in March, in February, March, and we got accepted. Uh, so now TACR is an official OpenStack uh, project uh, 
similar to all other projects that's it's it's in that bucket uh, so that's a significant milestone for us so now we are actually we released our third release as part of metaka so if you go see the re openstack release page you will find uh, uh, tacker we are working with our distro partners to actually have a uh, tacker bundle as part of the future openstack release uh, uh, distros and even um, so now that again it's an openstack official OpenStack project, we, can, uh, we are working with our uh, uh, other DevOps uh, projects like Puppet and Ansible to take Tacker and easy to, uh, to deliver to the folks who are interested in installing. So other thing that, over all this journey, um, it was probably this project is slightly different in the sense we were actively uh, working with the standards organizations and other uh, uh, organizations in the space uh, like OpenFE. OpenFE was significant. Uh, we have a very good uh, working relationship with many different projects in OpenFE, uh, uh, particularly SFC, uh, multi-site, and there are various others around the forwarding graph, and more are, we are interacting with more uh, projects in OpenFE to make Tacker relevant for those OpenFE projects. Uh, and the other significant thing is on the standard side, we want to make sure these are relevant. Again, this is important for uh, telcos to have the solution um, adhere to some of the standards. So, uh, so we are closely working with uh, uh, folks like OSS of around the TASCA standardization on the data models. So, like I mentioned, we came together as a community, and this is something I really, I'm really proud of. Uh, as leading the project for the last three year, uh, three cycles, is uh, getting a diverse community around this problem space. Uh, we also tend to attract a lot of uh, new open stackers, right? These are the folks who are uh, from the telcos. They are the, they are like, uh, they know more about NFE than OpenStack. So the team here spent significant amount of energy uh, in welcoming them, making them comfortable. Uh, so this is something we are really proud of, and uh, we are getting a lot more interest. So this pie chart will get more colorful. So, uh, so now let's go look briefly uh, into the architecture. So this is for the folks who might have seen the architecture diagram. This is a little bit more refined. Uh, so this is a... Uh, for the folks who are familiar with other OpenStack services, uh, Tacker is designed as another OpenStack service. So you would find familiar interfaces in the northbound uh, with an API uh, front end, uh, with a front end with the Horizon uh, GUI and uh, CLIs with using a Python Tacker client. So, so, the, so below the API layer, uh, you would see the three significant components that we have in uh, Tacker, which is our own catalog, which is where we kind of collect all the assets related to VNFs. Um, so, so this is our repository um, uh, of all the the, uh, the VNF templates, which is again all Tosca based, and this is sub, sub, uh, expected to grow uh, into other areas. Again, our main focus is around uh, VNF descriptor at this time. Uh, so we have two components there. Uh, I'm I'm more interested if we can focus on the actual feature. So this is how we are structured as a, a framework inside the code. Uh, there is a code that geared towards sort of downward facing towards the VNFs around configuration, around management and self-healing, and uh, more towards uh, bottom facing towards the OpenStack Vim. And there is also things that kind of ties these things together. So now we have a VNF. Uh, the VNFM component is capable of instantiating VNF uh, from the catalog. Uh, now, what do you do with it? I mean, the, the end goal here is to uh, get a network service up and running quickly, right? That's the old story here. So we need to wrap it up with other things like multi-site. This is something we heard as a very uh, important thing for the folks who tried Tacker, right? So you, you will hear more about the, this feature uh, in the f following slides. Uh, so we interact uh, with EAT. So we don't want to reinvent anything. We heavily leverage EAT, uh, and we have plans to integrate with a lot of other projects. Uh, we also integrate with uh, the other things that's happening on EAT Translator to Tosca and Tosca parsers. 
So for the rest of the features, I invite uh, Stephen from our core team. So as uh, Sridhar said, prior to, this is prior to uh, Mitaka release. Prior to Mitaka, we were very focused on uh, building a VNF manager that's generic, that's actually useful. Um, we first built a catalog where you can actually be a repository of our NFDs. It's really primitive, actually. At this point, it's basically just a database for you to fetch stuff. Um, and at the Liberty, actually, probably the kilo, the kilo uh, cycle, uh, we, make, we make the back end actually being heat, which is actually a tremendously great decision. Uh, but then what we didn't do, well, what we didn't know, actually, at the time was we, that there's actually a translator somewhere. So we... Prior to Mitaka, um, Tosca to heat translation is actually done directly inside Tacker. And it actually, heat will take care of all the instantiation and terminations of uh, VNFs. Uh, the thing that Tacker really adds values to is the configuration injection, configuration management. Um, <laughs> and again, this is per VNF specific. You can actually write different management drivers for different configurations because we firmly believe that different VNFs have different configuration models. And, um, for, and then the really cool thing is when you restart your VNF, it would actually map something back into the configuration back to the, uh, to the VNFs. And then you can actually do dynamic updates of the, uh, of the configurations, and then we push it down to the VNFs. Uh, health monitoring, yet another thing that uh, Tacker actually added as a value, is loadable per VNFs. So for per VNFs, you can set up different health monitoring policies. And in addition to that, if they are declared dead, literally they were dead, actually, um, then we, we provided a policies inside the VNFD that allows you to uh, self-heal. And then, as we said before, the configuration and everything would just be uh, 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 reapplied when that happens. So this is actually what we do leading up to Mitaka to make a VNF managers really solid. And then for the Mitaka um, features, which we'll actually go into much more detail, I bring to you Bob. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Um, so as Stephen and um, Sridhar have both mentioned, prior to Mitaka, uh, Tacker was using a custom DSL. Um, you could call it Tosca Lite if you wanted to. Um, but it really didn't have most of the functionality um, that you find in Tosca. And so one of the big features in Metaka was integrating the existing Tosca parser and existing heat translator libraries from the heat project into Tacker um, so that we can focus on the important things and get rid of our whole parsing section and our whole section that generates heat templates because that's not what we want to focus on. We want to take advantage of the existing libraries and, um, that the community is already providing. So we've been working um, closely with the Tosca NFD workgroup. Um, we started off with the CSD02 release, which was um, last November, I think, something like that. Um, and we started implementing that in the Tosca parser project um, and then integrated that support into Tacker. Um, in the process of doing that, we found lots of issues with the, with the CSD02 spec, fed those issues back into the, um, into the working group, and came up um, with the CSD03 spec, which was just released, I think, last week or this week. Um, and so that support is now in Tacker. Um, and that will be pushed into the Tosca parser project during the next cycle. Um, and so by combining that, by pulling that support into Tacker, we've opened up the ability to support a lot of other features that we really wanted to support. Um, in the past, any new feature that we wanted to support, we had to come up with the DSL ourselves. We had to figure out the mapping into heat, you know, basically go through that whole process. Um, by using the existing Tosca DSL and the translator and, and parser, we don't have to do any of that. We can, we can move much more quickly. This is basically just a graphic that shows what I just talked about. Um, we take the outputs of the, uh, of the OASIS working group for Tosca NFV, implement it, feed back into the working group so that they can make changes that they need to make, we can make suggestions, um, and that iterates. 
Those changes also get pushed into Tosca Parser, um, and we contribute to both Tosca Parser and Heat Translator as needed. Um, and then that whole tacker then orchestrates that whole template down into consuming the resources on, in the Vim. This is just an example of a, a Tosca NFE profile. It's essentially hello world um, in Tosca. Uh, you'll notice it's quite a bit different than heat. Um, it just is a different mindset. It's describing exactly the same thing. This is one compute in heat. This is one port in neutron and one network in neutron described from the Tosca NFE perspective. Um, Tosca uses, uh, Tosca NFV uses VDUs, virtual deployment units, which map to computes, uh, oh, sorry, Nova servers. Um, it uses connection points, CPs, uh, which map to neutron ports, and it uses the term called virtual link, which maps to a neutron network. Um, and then the way that's all bound together is through the port. So this is just an example. It has some of the TACR extensions to the NFV profile, um, things like the monitoring uh, the management driver, the monitoring policy, uh, the management property of the of the connection point, those are all TACR extensions to the existing NFV profile. Some of that has already been pushed back into the into the working group and has come out in the CSD03 release. Um, enhanced platform awareness is one of the uh, features that was made possible by the base Tosca support. So en enhanced platform awareness is something that allows the person writing the template to specify some of these advanced hardware features as requirements for their, for their VNF. So things like CPU pinning, <coughs> huge pages, SRIOV. Those can now all be represented in the Tosca template and the orchestrator, Tacker, or in Heat, can work together to make sure that those resources get applied to the VNF when they're needed. Um, the, the caveat that I always put on that, your hardware has to support it. There's no magic. Um, if the underlying hardware, the underlying networking doesn't support CPU pinning or SRIOV, this isn't gonna make it possible. Um, but assuming your underlying compute hardware, your underlying network hardware support all those things, this is how Tosca will represent them. He Heat can then work to orchestrate that in those requirements out to the, to the VNFs. Um, auto resource creation was another feature that was made possible by, the, by our use of Tosca parser and heat translator. Um, basically, for specific resources, you can specify them in the, hot, in the Tosca template. And if they don't exist already, the, the translation to heat will create those resources in the heat template, which will then create them in OpenStack just like you can do with a normal heat template today. So you can do flavor creation with heat templates today. You can do image creation. You can do network and subnet connect creation in heat templates. This maps the same thing out of Tosca. And for the next um, major feature in TACR for the Mintaka release, uh, we'll hand it over to Shropia. Shropia, excuse me. Thanks, Paul. So the final feature in the Mitaka release we worked on is the multi-site Vim support. So pre-Mitaka, uh, Tacker was able to deploy VNFs on the local OpenStack site where Tacker was installed and was running. The requirement then came, can Tacker deploy VNFs in multiple OpenStack sites uh, without having the need to deploy Tacker or without having the need to deploy or install Tacker in each of these sites? So in Metaka, we started working on the multi-site uh, Vim support, where Tacker, as a single controller, can deploy and manage VNFs in multiple OpenStack sites uh, as a single controller. This provides a unified view of Vim management uh, for the operator to manage these Vims and deploy VNFs in each of these uh, sites. And this particular feature also supports, uh, provides an explicit region support. So the operator uh, can uh, deploy a VNF on a specific region within an OpenStack site uh, if there are available regions in that OpenStack site. So the feature auto-discovers the regions and then displays it to the 
operator, operator can then specify the region as well to deploy the VNFs in these sites. So that brings us to the next slide, where when there are multiple OpenStack sites running in the telco infrastructure, there will be multiple versions running in OpenStack, going all the way from Kilo uh, to the latest release of Mitaka. So Tacker's multi-site feature is able to uh, register versions starting from Kilo. So when there are resource requests coming through the Tacker server, the resource requests are gracefully downgraded or upgraded based on the OpenStack release, and also the Keystone and the Heat template versions that are running on the OpenStack site. So Tacker, as you may know, extensively uses the Keystone and the Heat uh, OpenStack services. So it automatically detects the uh, version compatible on the OpenStack site and deploys uh, VNF in a seamless manner. You can learn more about the multi-site uh, feature in our multi-site session that's happening today in the same room at 11.40. So, so that wraps up our uh, Tacker uh, Mitaka features. We can now get into the demo. Uh, for the demo part, we're, uh, we have split the demo into two parts. In the first part of the demo, we will be uh, uh, showcasing the multi-site WIM feature, the Tosca template, which Bob uh, talked about, and also how we can perform VNF uh, lifecycle management uh, enabled with monitoring framework and also the management uh, configuration framework. In the second part of the demo, uh, we will be looking into the EPA feature and exercise some of the EPA properties like uh, CPU pinning, huge pages, and also finally looking to the auto flavor creation. So let's get straight into the demo now. So throughout the demo, we will be using the Horizon dashboard to demonstrate the features. So we log into the Horizon dashboard and navigate to the NFE tab. Under NFE tab, we uh, uh, browse into the WIM management page. Uh, let me pause here. So we have two WIMs already registered here. One is the SFO site, which is basically running the OpenStack Kilo release. And we also have an OpenStack uh, Liberty release running at the New York site. So these WIMs are already registered in the WIM management. So let's go ahead and click on the register WIM button uh, to see how we can register a new WIM into the WIM management dashboard. So I click on the register WIM uh, uh, button, uh, the pop-up comes up and you can feed in all the information to register the new site. Here we are registering a new site um, at Austin running the OpenStack Mitaka release. So we provide in all the parameters um, and also the Keystone authorization URL and the username and the project name where we want to deploy VNFs in a particular in a particular tenant on the remote side. So once we feed in these parameters, we can click on the register WIM button. So that would go ahead and successfully register the WIM in the WIM management dashboard. So here you can see uh, that the Austin site running the Metaka release has, an, has been successfully registered. We can now onboard a VNF and deploy a VNF on, in the Austin site. So let's go to the VNF catalog page. We already see there are multiple VNF catalogs from different vendors that are onboarded. So let's go ahead and click on the onboard VNF button and uh, uh, onboard a new OpenWRT VNF. So we select the Tosca template for the OpenWRT VNF and click on the open, uh, onboard VNF button. So here we see that the, onboard, uh, the OpenWRT VNF has been onboarded into the VNF catalog list. So if you click on the OpenWRT catalog, we can uh, look into the Tosca template that's been provided for the OpenWRT. So here there are three resource types. Uh, one is the first one is the video one, which is a node type uh, for uh, NFE VDU, and then there is a CP one, which is a node type connection point, and then there is uh, one of the uh, links is a VL one, which basically is on the management network specifying which network the VDU needs to connect to. So, and we also have other parameters provided in the VDU one. Uh, we can see that there is a management driver and monitoring policy. We can exercise these features once we deploy the VNF to see how these um, policies are triggered. 
So we can now go ahead and deploy the VNF which we just onboarded. So here we have a few VNFs already running and they're active. So we click on the deploy VNF button. Here we have a pop-up that comes up. We can provide the VNF details. The Vim uh, name, basically it's the Austin site which we just registered in the Vim management, and then provide the configuration file, like a sample firewall configuration that needs to be uh, configured on the VNF. So once those, that information is provided, we see that the OpenWRT VNF has, uh, uh, has been uh, deployed into the VNF manager and has the status pending create while all the background tasks are uh, getting completed. Once the tasks are completed, we see that the VNF status has changed to active. Now we can go to the Austin site dashboard to see if the VM was actually instantiated. Here in the NOVA instances, we can see uh, the new instance uh, that's got created. And if we navigate into the instance console, uh, we can confirm and uh, dump the firewall configuration if the firewall configuration was successfully applied. So here, uh, we just dump the firewall configurations uh, to see uh, that the management uh, framework in Tacker kicked in and uh, configured the VNF, the instance, with the firewall uh, configuration. Now, let's, in this, uh, uh, in the next part, we are going to uh, show the monitoring policy. We saw in the template that we had provided a monitoring policy. Uh, basically, whenever the VNF goes down, uh, we want the monitoring's failure policy to kick in. And based on the action you provide in the monitoring policy, uh, the action is triggered in TACR, and uh, the VNF is uh, respawn. Here, we gave the failure action as respawn. So let's go ahead and bring down the network interface on the instance to see uh, how the monitoring uh, framework responds to the status. So here, we brought down the network interface on the VM. We should uh, see the status change on the OpenWRT VNF. So it changes from active to dead because the network uh, was not reachable uh, on the VNF instance. So once uh, the status is changed to dead, uh, because of the respawn failure policy, the respawn logic kicks in and spins up a new instance for the OpenWRT VNF. We can see that the status has now changed to active. If we go into the Austin site dashboard again, we see that the instance was deleted and a new instance was spun. Uh, here you can just see the name as respawn, basically to tell the user that uh, the new instance uh, was created in the background for the VNF that went down. So this is the second part of the demo. We are going to uh, uh, demonstrate the enhanced platform awareness feature and also the auto flavor creation. So again, we uh, go back to the same workflow. We have the Vim management. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, register a new Vim site, which is, in, uh, which is enabled with uh, EPA-capable compute nodes. When we want to deploy a high-performance uh, uh, VNF, we want to uh, select the site which has the EPA compute nodes. And let's go ahead and register a new Vim at San Jose site, where we have an OpenStack instance running and configured with EPA compute nodes. So here we provide the Vim parameters uh, and then provide the username and project information where we want to deploy the VNF in San Jose OpenStack instance. And once that is done, we see that the San Jose site Vim has been successfully registered. It's running the OpenStack Metaka release and is enabled with the EPA compute nodes. So once that is done, we can now again go back to the VNF catalog and onboard a new uh, VNF. This time we are going to select the Cirrus um, uh, template, which has been configured with EPA properties. Once we onboard the VNF, we can take a look into the Tosca template to see what are all the EPA parameters we have provided for the VNF. So we select the Tosca uh, EPA uh, template and then click on the onboard VNF button. We see that the Cirrus EPA has been onboarded. So we can click on the Cirrus EPA uh, VNF uh, catalog to see uh, the Tosca template that was just uh, onboarded. So here we see the video note type. It may be a bit hard for people in the back to see. So in the video one properties, we have the mem page size and CPU allocation. This basically means we want a VNF with huge pages and dedicated CPU that 
will be applied for that should be applied for that instance. So we can pro uh, these are a few of the EPA uh, parameters we can provide. You can uh, learn more about the EPA parameters that can be provided in the Tosca template in an afternoon session happening in the same room, I think, at 1.30. So once we provide two of these EPA properties in the Tosca template, we should be uh, able to uh, deploy this VNF in San Jose site. So we can now navigate into the VNF manager and go ahead and deploy the VNF, which we just onboarded. So let's click on the deploy VNF. We have this pop-up coming in, and we supply the VNF name and the Ciro's EPA template, which we just onboarded. We have the VIM name here. We are going to select the San Jose site, which has the EPA compute nodes. And we see that the status of the VNF has gone into pending create. Uh, the, this will, in the background, go ahead and spin up an instance in San Jose OpenStack instance and um, uh, instantiate the uh, VNF. And here we have the VNF changing the status to active. We can now go into the San Jose OpenStack dashboard uh, to see the uh, instance and also the stack that was just created uh, for the VNF. So, uh, so Tacker heavily uses heat in the background. We can see that a stack was uh, created here. And uh, so that's the first one in the list. So if you click on the stack, we can see that there are three properties, there are three resources that will be created for the VNF. So here, uh, if you click on the stack, we can see that uh, there is a port, and there is a, a neutron port, there is a NOVA server, and the third resource is the flavor. So the flavor is the important thing for us to focus. This uh, demonstrates the auto flavor creation. Because we provided a flavor in the Tosca template with EPA properties, uh, the attacker went ahead and created a new video one uh, flavor, which basically has the EPA properties. So we can also take a look into the template, the heat specification, where the attacker translated the uh, Tosca template into the heat uh, specification. And you can focus here on the extra specs uh, property in the video one flavor, uh, which has the uh, huge pages and uh, CPU pinning, the CPU policy and the memory page size large refers to the two EPA properties, which we just provided in the Tosca template. We see that the extra specs has been uh, created for the flavor resource. And we can just navigate to the flavors list itself to confirm that the flavor was actually created for the particular VNF. If you click on the flavors, you can see that the, the last one in the flavors uh, list shows that the flavor has been created with the EPA properties. And finally, we can just confirm in the NOAA instances to see that uh, uh, an instance was actually created with a new flavor that was created uh, for the EPA and um, that it was successfully spawned in the NOAA. So that uh, completes the EPA and auto flavor creation. And with this, we uh, complete the demo for the Tacker Metaka features. I'll now hand it over to Sridhar. So now we're going to the uh, the roadmap of Tacker, moving on particular on the Newton released, upcoming Newton released. Uh, I think by far the most high profile, I think that's the appropriate word, for the Newton release is the VNFFG, the forwarding graph uh, descriptors. Uh, for the interest of time, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Uh, if you're interested, there will be a design summit session this afternoon in uh, Hilton. Uh, and so we, we decided actually to do this directly using the BNF FGD uh, templates on Tasker. Uh, and then we were actually leveraging all the information. The reason why we want to build that in Tacker is because you can leverage all the um, connection points, which are, as Bob said, uh, neutron ports and then virtual links with neutral networks, uh, extracting directly from VNFD. So if you think of it that way, you can now create a graph on the template. It's much easier to onboard for, for users, and you can actually reuse the template in, in many different deployments. We are integrating with the networking SFC um, project. If you actually, and I would imagine most audience actually know, for ITF uh, SFC architecture, 
the network NSFC uh, uh, module in, in Neutron is actually serving the SFP purposes, and you can think about hackers serving the SFC purposes. And then uh, we also actually, hacker members are also actually contributing to the open daylight um, SFC drivers in network, networking SFC. So very quickly, this is, you, you onboard a VNF FGD and as well as the associated VNFD into the catalog. And then by deploying the VNF FD, we could potentially, uh, uh, by, by self spawning the VNFs, and then actually chain them up using networking SFC. So it's very convenient. It's actually the beginning of something like a network descriptor. And it goes into Thanks, Stephen. So uh, this is yeah, a significant feature uh, uh, that kind of we've been iterating a few times uh, outside Tacker. And now we are finally uh, trying to get it in, in Newton. So beyond SFC, uh, like Stephen mentioned, is a significant thing that we are bringing in, is, uh, is, is various other features that we have been talking about for a while now. Um, again, there, are, there is enough interest uh, in the community to introduce support for network service descriptor, which is essentially ties all the all the other two things uh, together. For example, it, it ties uh, uh, the VNFDs, a collection of VNFDs and the forwarding graph uh, into one coherent network service. So this is something that's been asked uh, multiple times. I think we, have, we waited until we get the right right Tosca parser integration before we get to do this. So th I think this is a good time uh, to do it in Newton. Um, and another aspect that keeps coming is around scaling. So uh, so this is something we want to get started. Scaling is a huge, uh, uh, this again goes back to the monitoring uh, uh, aspects as well. It, it's a huge subject, but we want to get started in Newton around VDU scaling using uh, some sim simple cilometer alarms. Um, again, uh, we we hope to. There is already a spec that landed on each of this, and in fact, coding has started for uh, the forwarding graph. Uh, beyond this, the, the we have various other features, uh, particularly focused on VNFM. Uh, again, uh, I will reiterate that uh, VNFM is is a significant component of Tacker. Uh, there are features around. Uh, for example, VNFC. So today, VDU maps to a full image uh, of a compute. Now, VNFC is where you can take a blank VM and actually install your VNFC software on top of it. And all this can be described in Tosca template. So, uh, and various other usability enhancements that we are planning, uh, including some refactoring, which is, I think, it's required. Uh, we, after three cycles of uh, development, we need to take uh, uh, some effort to actually get reoriented ourselves in the code base to, to, ca to go after the rest of the features, including things like uh, notification. And there is uh, also an interest to evolve the catalog aspects of Tacker. Uh, now that we are going to have a lot more descriptors, like uh, NSD or forwarding graph descriptors, uh, and there are other projects in OpenStack community that we can actually collaborate uh, to, to, to evolve this component of uh, Tacker. So these are the stuff that's in our mind. Uh, we're going to discuss many, many of this. and. Uh, many more, uh, even beyond Newton. There are the various things in our uh, bucket list to go after. Uh, again, it depends on how many folks who are uh, going to uh, join. And in each cycle, we tend to get more uh, more contributors. So uh, so, so we welcome, uh, there are a lot to do in, in Tacker. And if you're in the space of NFE, uh, you should, I would recommend you to consider participating in the Tacker project uh, so that uh, the, the something that we can uh, take together as a community in, uh, in to get things better. Uh, so one common question that comes into uh, in these things, again, there are a lot of projects uh, in our ecosystem in, in the industry today addressing NFE, NFEO and, uh, and VNFM. Uh, so TACR's primary role is, uh, is, is VNFM, the generic VNFM. Did I jump? So, uh, so we want to make that better. Uh, so we have many features lined up uh, in the, in the f uh, track of VNFM, and we will continue to do that. So uh, in that sense, we are excited about our integration with various other projects like uh, OpenO uh, and even other projects beyond OpenO that are interested in consuming Tacker as a VNFM. And, and we will continue to support that. We are quite excited about those uh, integration opportunities. Uh, 
uh, there is a portion of the community who also want to explore uh, some features in the NFEO, and many of them are like dual nature, frankly. Like for example, multi-site could be even considered for VNFM to place VDUs in different sites. And uh, there is also forwarding graphs within VNF uh, itself. Like if, you're v if you have a complex VNF, you might have VDUs that need to be chained. So, so we are exploring uh, those features. We, even though we slotted as a VNF NFEO of Tacker, it, they are like quite a dual nature in general. So uh, I think I'd like to leave some time for uh, Q&A. So, uh, so here are some pointers uh, to go after. Uh, so we have a wiki uh, docs. Now that we are a proper official project, uh, everything is hosted in uh, the openstack.org. Uh, so we have a proper spec process, so you can come and write blueprints. Um, and by the way, this demo video is available as well. Uh, and reach out to us. When, like I said, we welcome uh, new contributors, we have experience in welcoming brand new stackers. We made new stackers, we are really proud of that. Um, so uh, do join us in, in this journey. Uh, there are two more sessions uh, later today on Tacker, or oh, not on multi-site like Shripriya mentioned, and another is around uh, EPA, which is again a very uh, significant thing that we have done in this cycle. A lot of effort has went and it's a, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Uh, so this effort that went in NOAA uh, is, I think, is now easy to consume through Tacker. So I think we've, we are trying to finish the journey that the folks uh, in NOAA started in, in running high performance workloads, uh, uh, high performance, low latency workloads uh, for NFE purpose. So that's it. Thank you. I think we might have a few minutes for question, question and answer. If you have one, please line up in the mic, please. Yes. Are you using Solometer for monitoring VNFs today? So that's our intent. Our first uh, uh, VNF scaling would integrate uh, with Solometer. Okay. Uh, Oh, there's a spec for auto scaling, uh, true, and it's actually written against uh, return to use a uh, cylometer. Uh, but uh, beyond scaling, we, we can also use it for things like respawn. Uh, yeah. that well, you, the demo that you showed today, where you, VNF dies, said you know, the network interface was done, you responded. How do you detect the failure? So in this case, there was a, a, a monitoring driver, and we have it's a loadable driver. We just demonstrated using ping something okay. that's easy to demonstrate. Uh, but you can write your own driver. There is one for HTTP okay. check, and you can write other things. Okay. And that's the one we are expanding in the next cycle. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. I think this is really great. It brings um, mainly three um, different communities together, right? Etsy, Absolutely. Uh, uh, Oasis, and so on. Um, and it establishes uh, concepts like VDU on a high level of abstraction. Uh, as you mentioned, it maps down to APIs like Nova, Neutron, and so on. I would like you to ask, um, could you talk a little bit about um, this mapping and uh, the traceability? So you need, of course, to map things down. Uh, but do you coordinate um, all the different resources which are generated? And uh, well. Is there any trade-off or so in this regard? So, so in those areas, we kind of leverage heavily uh, heat, meaning hot resources. We do, uh, there, is, was, there is an ask to expose those resources instantiated with Tacker at one level up. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, not sure if you understand the question correct, uh, there is also efforts around uh, policy uh, that where you may, where do you want to, place these resources, there are some efforts. We discussed a few in the Birds of Feather session yesterday. Uh, I mean, when things are generated, do, does information get lost? I mean, Nova is not aware of a VDU, right? But do you keep this information? Uh, are there trade-offs in this regard? No, so we rely on each Thanks. stack. So, that, so and uh, we, again, we rely on EAT for some of these things. So we don't maintain into, uh, the resources created by EAT, but we, we indirectly map it to the stack that it creates. Thanks. Sure. Uh, thank you. I think, thank thank, I think we are out of time. Maybe we can uh, take rest of the questions in the hallway, please. Okay. Thank you so much.